Is SpaceX Starlink service ready for 2022? Well, I've been using it for most of 2021, and I have to say, it is a pretty awesome feat of engineering. We're gonna talk about the good and the bad of Starlink, what needs to be improved, and some realistic expectations if you're trying to jump into it in early 2022. So is Starlink something that you should get involved with? Well, with any good video and any good product, the answer is it's complicated. If you live in an underserved area, rural and remote areas without high speed internet, this will be a step up. There really is no question about it. The upload speeds are good, the download speeds are good, the latency is good compared to existing satellite and DSL providers. However, there are some issues afoot. Let's talk foremost about the latency because that remains one of the premier things with SpaceX Starlink. When looking at the latency, that is the time it takes for you to do something, say try to pull up a web page and for that web page to load. Or if you're gaming, the time it takes for you to click on somebody's head and for that shot to be registered and for you to kill that person in the video game. Latency, you want the number to be as low as possible. And with SpaceX Starlink, you're consistently in the low 30 millisecond range which is fantastic. When looking over a large period of testing throughout an entire day, my maximum latency test of 66 milliseconds, all the way down to 19. But again, realistically, you're gonna be probably sitting in those low 30s, which again, is fantastic. Download speed is something, of course, everybody wants to know because download is just how fast you're gonna be able to download something like streaming content that may be 4K or trying to download large games or other large files as well. And this is an area where Starlink is very, very good compared to its existing competition, existing satellite service, or things like DSL. Now it's important to note that SpaceX Starlink, it boasts a download speed of 150 megabits per second. And yes, I can frequently hit near this number, sometimes over, sometimes under. The biggest issue when it comes to SpaceX Starlink is consistency with run-to-run -run variants really being, quite frankly, all over the place. Let's take a look at a period of testing between midnight and 2 a.m., a period when there will likely be less activity on the service. At a mean download of 189 megabits per second, which is fantastic, but at one point, a minimum all the way down to 19 megabits per second. That max, all the way up to 301. Notice the spikes on this graph. There's huge run-to-run -run variance. When you look at the difference from test to test, the mean difference here is 73 and a half megabits per second. That is huge. Again, consistency with Starlink remains to be an issue. Yes, the download speeds even as low as 19 megabits per second, likely going to be an upgrade for most people coming from satellite or DSL. However, it is something you will feel and will be affected by if you're trying to download large files. So again, trying to set realistic expectations. It will be a vast upgrade for a lot of people. And even these jumpy download speeds, it's something you likely will not feel when gaming or even streaming for that matter. Really, the only thing that will impact that will be outages. The download speed being at least consistently good, that's a great thing for Starlink users. Now, one issue with SpaceX Starlink, and it's something I have brought up many, many times in past videos, is the upload speed. The highest I've personally seen on a days long test is 34.9 megabits per second up, which is of course very respectable. And more importantly, the mean, when you look at testing over a day, is about 10 to 12 megabits per second, which again is likely gonna be an upgrade for many people living in remote and rural areas, but it's still not fantastic. In fact, when you look at the minimums, there are many times when I get sub five to three megabits per second, the lowest was 0.38. So if you're getting SpaceX Starlink, don't think you can stream. Don't think you can handle all these voice over IP phone calls and video calls like Skype or Zoom flawlessly. Upload will be an issue where you will get hiccups. And again, that remains one of the biggest problems with SpaceX Starlink. There will be a lot of good time. However, there's enough periods of dips going below a megabit per second upload 
or I cannot recommend it if you're trying to work from home and doing a lot of voice over IP or any type of video calls because quite frankly, you will likely have issues. It's one of the main reasons I still have two internet providers at home. Starlink, I love to use and have fun using it. But when it comes to work, I'm usually using my Medicom internet service mainly because I'm afraid of dropouts when trying to do important phone calls. Now, another area where Starlink has dramatically improved through 2021 is outages. Of course, they continue to launch more and more satellites. That's a great thing. That will continue to improve service for the months and years to come. However, outages still do occur in early 2022. An outage by Starlink is classified as two seconds of no connectivity, which Yes, that I think is pretty respectable. However, even a second of no connectivity will be an issue if trying to do phone calls or trying to game. Streaming won't be impacted by anything less than two seconds, so at least you got that going for you. So when looking at outages, they tend to happen in bursts, is something I have noticed. Usually you can go several days without issues, but then you'll have a day or a night where over a period of an hour or two, there's constant outages. That is just a reality of Starlink as it is in early 2022. This will likely improve as they continue to launch more satellites. But again, just trying to set some realistic expectations for Starlink if you are interested in trying to jump to it. So when looking at all of these things, the upload, the download, the latency, the outages and things like that, do I recommend Starlink? Absolutely, if you're coming from rural areas where you're sitting on existing satellite internet or things like DSL. Starlink will be an improvement. There really is no doubt about it. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. There are definitely a lot of issues that have to be flushed out and it's issues that they continue to work on as well. I think you can expect it to get better, but in its current state, if you're trying to switch to Starlink as your main internet provider for really heavy duty tasks like working from home or schooling from home and things like that, you're gonna have issues, you're gonna have hiccups and don't think you can become a content producer with SpaceX Starlink because the upload speeds are still pretty rough when trying to upload large video files or stream. You're gonna have issues. But for streaming, watching movies or even YouTube TV and things like that, it really is a good service. When gaming, the latency is really surprisingly good. Yes, you'll have hiccups here and there when switching from satellite to satellite or jumping from ground station to ground station, but it's pretty darn good. So yes, I think Starlink is a recommended service and I do have high hopes for it in the months and years to come. Thanks for watching everybody. If you like this video, feel free to follow for any of my other Starlink content. I have a whole lot of videos on this channel. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment if you want to leave some constructive criticism. We'll see you again in the next video.